All right, next problem up. Let's handle this one with that same grace. So the first thing we always do is read that question sentence. And it says, how long did the run take? Okay, so how long did that take? That tells me, that screams at me that we're dealing with time. We are trying to find how long something takes. To me, that's time all the way. And so I see that we're dealing with hours. Okay, sounds good. The great thing is that our rate over here is listed in miles per hour. So there's no unit converting, you know, needing to be done. So we're good. So we're going to go ahead and set things up and say distance equals rate times time. And so we know that we're looking for time. We're looking for how long this run took. And then we were going to fill in everything else that we have. So we see that we have 12 miles, which is going to be distance. Distance, miles, absolutely one and the same. And then the rate that we're given is 8 miles per hour. And I'll plug in right there as well. So we have 12 equals 8 multiplied by T, which is time. And so once we have this setup, we know that we're working backwards. We're trying to get T or time by itself. And so to do that, we have got to get rid of that 8. We see that it's 8 times T. And the opposite of multiplying by 8, that's going to be dividing. Yeah, we're going to divide both sides by 8 just like this. And once we get that done, cancels out on the right side, leaving us with T by itself. Now, 12 isn't cleanly divisible by 8. So we're going to have to go ahead and set up our long division so we can see what happens. So I will gently move this over here to the right, and then I'll set up my long division. 8 goes into 12 how many times? So 8 goes into 12. That's just going to be once. And we'll write that 1 right there. When we subtract, we're going to subtract 1 times 8, which is going to be 8. So we have 4 left over. And this is where the decimal really starts coming into play because we do not want to leave a remainder because we see that this is in decimal form, not remainder form. So what we need to do here is pay attention. We're going to put the decimal right there where it is, even though we, don't, you know, we haven't used it yet, but the decimal has always been there. And don't forget, we're going to put that decimal up top as well in the same exact spot. So with that said now, we're going to place a zero because we can say, you know, just to make sure you understand where this is coming from, you could say, hey, I have $12. And you could also say, I have $12 and zero cents. They both mean the same thing. They both mean the same thing. So with that, yeah, that zero is perfectly fine being written. And now we'll drop the zero. And then we'll ask ourselves, what is 40 divided by 8? How many times does 8 go into 40? Yeah, that's a total of 5 times. And that's a clean 5. Because 8 times 5, yeah, that's 40. No remainder. All good. And so there is our answer, 1.5. And given that we were talking about time here, that'll be 1.5 hours. Making our final answer here, A, 1.5. And there we go, my party people. All right, so let's begin this next problem by reading the question sentence first, as always. All right, so the question sentence reads, how far apart are they after 2.5 hours? So we really want to begin here by just ignoring that 2.5 hours because that's conditional information. That's not what we're looking for. Everybody, what are we actually looking for? We're not looking for time. We are actually looking for distance. How far apart? How far apart are they after two and a half hours? So here's what we want. And this over here is conditional information. So we want the distance. We want the distance between these two things. And the time frame that we have to work with here is 2.5 hours. All right, so with that said now, let's read the situation here. Let's get the story so we can really understand how we're going to work with the 2.5, how we're going to work with everything else that's written in the problem. Because remember, everybody, 
It's not about what the numbers are. It's about what the numbers mean. One more time. It's not about what the numbers are. It's about what they mean. Two trucks leave the same depot at the same time in opposite directions. Again, we have these two trucks that begin from the same depot. One goes this way and the other goes in the exact opposite direction. Everybody, let's prepare ourselves because if this just so happens to be a distance rate time problem, what can we do typically with the distances or the rates when we have opposite direction movement? What can we do with those distances or rates? Yeah, for the time that they're moving at the same time, we can add the distances and we can also add those rates to achieve that distance. So just knowing that one little bit of your notes and you know your tips and strategies for distance rate time gives you a huge advantage moving forward. So that's what we know there. Let me highlight that in green so we know what we're talking about. Opposite direction, same time. And then we have two rates. We have one rate over here, 52 miles per hour. And then we have our other rate at 46 miles per hour. So one more time, everybody, because we are dealing with opposite directions, we will do what with those two rates? Yeah, if we want to save time and conserve a lot of time and energy on this problem, we can add these rates and just do one distance rate time formula instead of two. We can just do one instead of doing two separate ones, and that makes everything all the worthwhile. This will be 98 miles per hour combined, which means that they are moving apart from each other at a pace of 98 miles per hour. Opposite directions, we add those rates and distances. Same direction, we subtract. So in this case, we'll add them. There we go, we have our distance equals rate times time consolidated here. So the distance will be 98 combined miles per hour multiplied by 2.5 hours. So we'll go ahead and get that done here right on the side. Let me move this out of the way. And otherwise we're done. 98 multiplied by 2.5. Here we go. Eight times five is 40, carry the four. Nine times five is 45, carry the four is 49. We'll move it over here to the next line so we can handle the two. And we have eight times two, which is going to be 16, and we'll carry that one. And then we have nine times two, which is 18. We'll carry the one, and that'll give us 19. So now that we're here, we'll finish things up by adding what we need to. So we have zero, nine plus six is 15, carry the one. And then we have four plus nine plus one, which will be 14, and we will carry that one, and then we have two. And because we were dealing with a decimal right over here in our multiplication, we'll bring one decimal place back right there. So we have 245 right there as our final answer. Again, 245 miles as our final answer, the combined distance or the distance between these two trucks after leaving the depot.